Hey everyone! Welcome to XFundy Diaries. My name is Ellie, my pronouns are she, her, and it's Pride Month! In honor of Pride, I'm going to be sharing more about my experiences growing up bisexual in Christian fundamentalism. When I was 13, I had the infamous dream that I've talked about on this channel before. It was a sex dream about a girl that I dismissed as just one of Satan's weird temptations. And it was around this time that I started to obsess over finding a special kind of best friend. And the word that I used to describe the kind of friend I was looking for is bosom friend, which comes from the Anne of Green Gables series. Let's talk about Anne and her bosom friend for a moment. Here's my favorite quote on the subject from an article written by Heather Hogan. Some people will tell you that Anne Shirley was in love with Diana Barry because Anne Shirley is a lesbian. Other people will tell you that cannot be, that Anne Shirley was in love with Gilbert Blythe because Anne Shirley is straight. Well, my friends, I'm here to tell you something, and it's that Anne Shirley was in love with Diana Barry and then later was in love with Gilbert Blythe, though she never truly forgot her first passionate blush of awakening with her bosom friend, because Anne Shirley is very clearly bisexual. Now, this may or may not be true, and of course there's no way to prove it, but I agree 100% with this author's assessment. And here are some clips from an adorable web series I found recently that is a modern reimagining. In this version, Anne actually confesses her love for Diana, and Mrs. Barry, Diana's mom, forbids them from seeing each other because of it. Ooh, ooh, this one. Um, do you and Diana have anything matching yet? Yes, we do. We have matching hair bows, and it's adorable. I want to pick the next one. Okay. So, Anne, when are you going to confess your undying love for Diana? Well, you know what they say. You're not really best friends until someone confuses you for gay lovers. They do? Really? You have a crush on me? I had no idea. I guess you could say so. I mean, I really do love you as a friend, but... Yeah, I mean, no, no. Don't worry about it. Diana is the best friend I've ever had, and she's as... I'm the best friend she's ever had, and I'm not gonna throw away something like that over a little crush. I mean, I'm not gonna pop on a Federer and call her a friend zoning bitch because of it. Being just her friend is enough. But as it turns out, not even that is going to be possible anymore. Diana's mother, Mrs. Barry, has been watching my videos. I actually found this web series in a video by another YouTuber named Ellie. I'll put a link to that video down below. Here's an example of my search for a bosom friend. This was a few weeks before my 13th birthday. I know you can't just walk up to someone and say, hey, do you want to be my best friend? But I really need a best friend, a bosom friend. No, I just want one. Bad. Today I broke down crying because I need someone that understands me, that knows me, that loves me, that enjoys being with me. Crying. That isn't a word I even want to write in my own personal journal. I hate when I cry, even though it's romantic. And I hate to admit it to anyone, even my mom. It's so girly and babyish. There's a girl that I used to know, and she and I have been writing to each other. Every letter that I get from her says, please write back, I want to hear from you, in big letters. For a long time, I've been wondering, wondering if maybe she and I could have a deep relationship. I'm praying about it, but it's so hard to wait. I would go on to write about girls that I met over the next year or so and wonder, is she the one? No joke, that's the exact wording I used, the one. Looking back on this now, I feel confident that what I was describing was a girlfriend. If I had used that same wording to describe a boy I met, asking myself if he could be the one, then I think many people would assume that I was talking about a romantic desire, that I wanted him to be my boyfriend. But because I was talking about girls, I think a lot of people would assume that it was a platonic relationship that I was talking about. That binary is a huge purity culture problem. That a friendship between a boy and a girl is assumed to be heading towards romance, and that a friendship between two boys or two girls 
excludes any potential for romance at all. Obviously, it also erases non-binary people altogether. I'm really passionate about platonic friendships existing between people of all genders, but that's a topic for another video. For now, back to my quest to find a bosom friend. I truly had no idea that I wanted a girlfriend. Unfortunately, I grew up in a very homophobic household in the greater context of a very homophobic homeschool community. Not only was I taught that homosexuality was a disgusting and perverted lifestyle, but implied in that teaching was that romantic feelings between people of the same gender just don't exist. Same gender relationships were framed as lustful, carnal sins of the flesh. Feelings and desires of love and romance were completely excluded from the equation. So I had no idea how to recognize those desires in myself because I had no idea that those kinds of feelings were even real. On top of that, bi erasure had me convinced that I loved boys way too much to be into girls. As I mentioned in my first purity culture video, I was consistently labeled as boy crazy by my mom. So having that drilled into me all the time further hid my bisexuality from me. My mom thought that I was so boy crazy that she wanted to keep me away from the homeschool boys that I got to see once or twice a week if I was lucky. In seventh and eighth grade, I was always begging my mom to let me go to school for high school. But the only school that she was actually considering sending me to was an all girls school. April 24th, 2004. Now I know why mom might send me to an all girls school. Because she thinks I might be boy crazy. And today when she said that, I did look at my life and I realized that I've had a lot of crushes in 13 years and a few lovelorn incidents too. So today I have decided to continue on with life without thinking twice about guys, at least not in that way. I gave my heart to Jesus. In retrospect, this is kind of hilarious to me. Imagine if my mom had sent me to an all girls school like she was considering. I could have discovered my bisexuality a lot earlier, and boy would that have been a surprise to my parents. It also would have been an epic fuck you to purity culture, because my mom assumed that keeping me away from boys would stop me from having crushes and thinking about sex. A few years after I began my earnest search for a bosom friend, I actually found her. We had a deep and instant connection, and I adored her. She loved the Anne of Green Gables series like me, and we actually did call each other bosom friends. We gushed our love for each other, both in person and in a collection of letters that I still have. But it never occurred to me until very recently that the passionate and sometimes confusing feelings that I had for her when we were teenagers demonstrated my repressed desire to be more than friends. As often happens for me lately, this revelation came through a tweet. It's from Kristen Chirico in December 2020, and it says, Did you have really intense, dramatic, jealous, and emotional friendships with your best femme friend growing up, or were you straight? It was a funny tweet, but it kind of hit me like a ton of bricks. I immediately thought of this person and our friendship, and my feelings for her as a teen suddenly made perfect sense. There was a reason why I felt so possessive of her and why I hated when she had other close female friends. I remember thinking, what is wrong with me? Why do I feel so jealous of other girls she pays special attention to? Why do I feel so threatened by her other friends? I felt like it was a personal failing or a character flaw of mine. I thought I was just selfish and a bad friend. I didn't realize that the feelings I had for her went beyond just friendship because I didn't realize that those feelings existed. All I knew at the time was that my friendship with her was special and different than any other friendship I had ever had before. It felt sacred. And I'm grateful for the portrayal of Anne and Diana, because even though I wasn't able to recognize the potentially romantic connection between them, they still validated my own relationship with my bosom friend. I had some representation even if I couldn't fully understand it or put it into words. I'm still figuring out what it means for me to be bi and queer as a 30-year-old late bloomer. I'm confident that I have so much more self-discovery ahead of me. I don't know exactly what that looks like, but I do know that it includes honoring my past experiences, feelings, and desires 
now that I have words for them. I appreciate you listening to these stories here on YouTube because speaking them out loud has been a very helpful part of my healing and self-discovery journey. Happy Pride, everyone. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.